Hello dear students and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we shall do the assignments of your chapter number 6, Sequence of Tenses. Now, let us understand what do you understand by a tense. Now, a tense, as we all know, indicates the time of the verb in the sentence. Now, every sentence has a verb. Without the verb, the sentence is meaningless. Now, what time the verb has occurred or has done its action indicates that we will get to know what is the tense of the sentence. Tense means there are three kinds of tenses as we know. Past tense, future tense, present tense. Now, the verb at what time it is taking place is determining our tense. It shows whether the event, action or state has occurred in the past tense, present tense or future time. Three main verb tenses, past tense, present tense, future tense. In this chapter, we will understand the sequence of tenses. That means if there are two or more clauses in a sentence, which sentence depends on the which clause. The principle in accordance with which the tense of a verb in the subordinate clause follows the tense of the verb in the principal clause. That is known as your sequence of tenses. So, what do you understand by sequence of tenses? There are two clauses in a sentence. One is your subordinate clause and one is your principal clause. Now, what is the principles of sequence of tenses stating? That the tense of the verb in the subordinate clause follows the tense of the verb in the principal clause. So, we are basically concerned with what is the tense of the verb of the principal clause. And depending on that, the tense of the verb of the subordinate clause will follow. Don't get confused students. I will teach you from basics. What is a clause? Before understanding what is a subordinate clause, what is the principal clause, try and understand what is a clause first. Clause is the smallest unit of any sentence. The clause in a sentence has a subject and a predicate. What is subject? About whom we are talking about. Who is going to do the action? That is the subject. What is the predicate part of the sentence? The predicate part of the sentence will always contain your verb. Remember, the part of the sentence which contains the verb is your predicate. Example, I will call you when I reach home. Now, there are two clauses here. I will call you and when I reach home. Now, can you see in the first clause, I will call you, there is a verb. And in the second clause, when I reach home, also has a verb. That means one will be the principal clause and one will be the subordinate clause. How do we identify which is the principal clause and which is the subordinate clause? As I told you, every clause has a subject and a predicate. Now, because the, sub, the clause has a predicate, it has to have a verb also. Now, why are we concerned so much with the verb? Because the tense of the verb will determine the sequence of tenses which will occur. What is determining the sequence of tenses? The tense of the verb in the subordinate clause and the tense of the verb in the principal clause. Two clauses, principal clause, subordinate clause. Both of them have got verbs. We will base the sequence of our tenses on the tense of the verbs in these two clauses. Okay? So, I will, I will explain what is subordinate clause now. Subordinate clause. Subordinate means, kisi cheez se niche rena, being below something, being dependent on something is called as subordinate. So, also known as dependent clause. On its own, it cannot make sense. The sentence on its own cannot make sentence. It has to be attached to another clause to convey its meaning. So, subordinate clause is also known as dependent clause. Cannot stand alone as it alone can't express a complete thought. Example, I will call you when I reach home. Now, students, what do you think over here is your clause, subordinate clause? Both are clauses. I will call you as a clause and when I reach home is a clause. We have to identify which is the subordinate clause. Now, if I tell you, I will call you, can you understand the meaning of the sentence, I will call you? Yes, I am the subject and call is the verb. So, I will call you is a complete sentence having the object as you also. But if I just tell you when I reach home, are you understanding what will happen when I reach home? 
How do I reach home? What is going to happen after I reach home? Nothing. So if I just say when I reach home, I am not conveying any meaning to you. You are not able to understand completely what I am trying to say. So when I reach home will have to depend on some other clause to convey its meaning in full. So when I reach home is your subordinate clause having the verb reach. What is principal clause? Principal clause is also known as independent clause. It can stand alone as it can alone on its own express a complete thought. Like example, I will call you when I reach home is made up of two clauses. I will call you and when I reach home. But what, which part of the whole sentence is making sense on its own? I will call you. You are understanding? I will call you. So, I will call you as the principal clause because it need not necessarily be attached to any other clause to convey its meaning. Okay. So, why are we understanding what is subordinate clause and what is principal clause? Because we need to understand the sequence of tenses in this chapter. Why do we need to understand subordinate clause and principal clause? Because our sequence of tenses will depend upon the sequence of the verbs in our subordinate clause and the verb in the principal clause. That is why. Okay. Now, there are some certain rules of sequence of tenses which we need to keep in mind before going over to our assignment. Now, we know both the subordinate clause and the principal clause have your verbs. Now, if the verb in the principal clause PC is in present tense or future tense, then the subordinate clause verb can be in any tense. Okay, so basically our subordinate clause verb is following the tense of the verb of the principal clause. Are you understanding students? There are two verbs in both the clauses. Okay, but our subordinate clause is dependent on the tense of the verb of the principal clause. So, we will say that if we identify the verb in the permanent, in the principal clause to be in present or future tense, then the subordinate clause verb can be in any tense. Any tense meaning present tense, future tense or past tense. This is your first rule. But if the second rule states, if the verb in the principal clause is in past tense, then the subordinate clause verb will be in the corresponding past tense only. Okay, what does our first rule say? If verb in PC is in present or future tense, then subordinate clause verb can be in any tense. You have to remember this. If verb in, present, in principal clause is in past tense, then subordinate clause verb will be in the past tense only. Now, but there are some exceptions to this rule number two. Basic rules are these two. But the second rule has got some exceptions. Let us understand in detail what is the exception. Now when the subordinate clause expresses some universal truth or some habitual fact, then the past tense in the principal clause is followed by the present tense of the subordinate clause. You have to remember this that the past tense in the uh, principal clause will be followed by the present tense of the subordinate clause. You have to memorize this. Okay. Now sometimes after a past tense in the principal clause a present or future tense is used to make, make a statement which the speaker knows not to be true. Okay. What does our uh, rule number two say? That past tense in principal clause is followed by past tense in subordinate clause. But exception is if the speaker knows that a statement is being made which is not to be true, then the past tense in the principal clause is followed by a present or future tense in the subordinate clause. Okay. Now, if the subordinate clause is an adverb clause, then there is a then even if there is a past tense in the principal clause, it can be followed by any tense required by the subordinate clause. And if the subordinate clause is an adjective clause, any tense may be used. So these are basic few exceptions. With practice, you will understand. Okay. So at the more exercises you do, all these rules will be more clear to you. Now, rule number three states, depending on the tense of the verb in the principal clause, the subordinate clause verb must be expressed by may or might. Now, may is generally used for present tense and might is used for past tense. Keep these small, small things in mind which will help you in making your uh, 
in avoiding grammatical mistakes okay may is used for present tense might is used for past tense now rule number 4 says if your principal clause is in future tense then the future tense is not used in the subordinate clause and sentences which begin with when until before or after remember if your subordinate clause is beginning with words like when until before after then the future tense is not used okay even if future tense is used in the principal clause rule number 5 says there are certain expressions like if only as if if it is time wish that then past tense is used after these kind of expressions like if only as if it is time and wish that now based on all these rules let us go over to the assignment students first try to understand don't try to memorize the rules try to see what rule is stating what try to keep it in mind and then there are certain few exceptions to certain rules try to keep that also in mind if you memorize it you might follow but if you practice a number of exercises you will get all your grammar exercise answers correct so based on these rules let us do the first one i will not help him until he dash for it the verb given is ask now how do we approach the sequence of tenses assignment first thing this statement is given to you now identify how many clauses are there two clauses what are the two clauses one will be your principal clause and one will be your subordinate clause principal clause will make sense on its own subordinate clause will have to be attached to another clause to convey its meaning but both this principal clause and subordinate clause will have their own verbs and the tense of the verbs will help us in following the sequence of tenses so the first one i will not help him is a clause on its own until he asks for it okay so i will not help him is a principal clause because i is the subject help is the verb him is the object all three things are there so it makes a meaningful sentence until he dash ask for it until he ask for it but we will have to uh, identify what is the tense of the verb ask over here but until he asks for it is the subordinate clause because until he asks for it doesn't make any sense on its own so what is the rule which we are applying here what is the verb over here help if principal clause verb is in future tense why it is in future tense i will not help him i have still not helped him i might help him in the future so this is future tense i will not help him if here the principal clause verb is in future tense then the future tense is not used in subordinate clause beginning with when until before after i taught you in the rules that subordinate clauses beginning with when until before and after will not use the future tense so this is using your asks over here i will not help him until he asks for it so this is not in future tense okay ask is not in future tense so this is the rule which we have applied here she boasted as if she dash everything identify the two clauses over here she boasted is your principal clause because i am understanding you are just saying she boasted i can understand that she is boasting now as if she know everything that what do you mean by that if i tell you as if she know everything are you understanding anything no so this is a subordinate clause it will depend on something to convey its meaning so what is the rule that will apply here to know the what is the verb form of know over here after expressions like if only as if it is time which that past tense is used so what is the past tense of no it is new she boasted as if see the the phrase the as if is over here so after expressions like as if past tense is used so she boasted as if she knew everything that is why no becomes new all these small rules you have to keep in mind and all these small small expressions after which these tenses are used third my uncle told me that he make a good profit my uncle told me and that he made make a good profit now what is the principal clause over here he made or make a good profit is the principal clause my uncle told me that is a subordinate clause because i am not understanding anything if i am told that my uncle told me what am i supposed to understand from this sentence nothing so the rule applied over here is what is the verb over here verb in your 
subordinate clauses told and make has to be changed so if verb in the principal clause is in past tense then subordinate clause verb will be in the corresponding past tense so my uncle told me that he made a good profit make becomes made now number 4 he called me as many times as he want he called me he called me is your principal clause as many times as he wanted is your subordinate clause so the verbs are called and wanted okay what is the rule applied over here if verb in past principal clause is in past tense then subordinate clause will be in the corresponding past tense so he called is in past tense so the uh, clause following it will also be in your past tense number 5 she wrote as fast as she can we have to change the verb form of can she wrote as fast as she could now if verb in the principal clause clause she wrote is your principal clause as fast as she could is your subordinate clause now your wrote is in past tense so the clause uh, the subordinate clause verb following it will also be in the past tense so can becomes could she wrote as fast as she could number 6 i knew the doctor who dash here the verb is come i knew if verb in principal clause is in past tense new is in past tense then what will be the subordinate clause verb form uh, it will become past tense corresponding past tense so come becomes came here i knew the doctor who came here number 7 he pretends as if he dash blind he pretends as if he were blind why he pretends is your uh, principal clause as if he were blind is your subordinate clause he pretends after expressions like if only as if it is time wish that past tense is used so even though it is pretends but it has the phrase as if so after this your past tense will be used what is the past tense of blind were blind as if he were blind okay now number 8 you will be glad to know that i dash the competition the verb is win you will be glad to know that i have won the competition why because our principal clauses i have won the competition subordinate clauses you will be glad to know now what is the uh, rule applied over here if verb in principal clause is in present or future tense then subordinate clause verb can be in any tense okay so this is the rule which we have applied over here he assured me that he dash my watch repair he assured me is my principal clause that he repair my watch is your subordinate clause but what is the tense of repair over here assured and repair are your verbs in the principal clause and subordinate clause the rule which we apply here is if the verb in the principal clause is in past tense assured is in past tense so what will be the subordinate clause verb in what tense it will be in the corresponding past tense only therefore he assured me that he would repair my watch he works hard so that he may get the scholarship he works hard so that he may get the scholarship he works hard is your principal clause subordinate clauses so that he may get the scholarship now may as i told you suggests a high degree of probability in the present tense now works is in your present tense so he works hard is present tense so the subordinate clause verb tense will be followed by the same tense so we use may over here and it, we use may because it is likely to happen in situations which are likely to happen in the present tense so with this we come to the end of your sequence of tenses assignment if you like my channel students please like share and subscribe keep notification button on for more such videos and kindly share this video as much as you can let me know what other topics and chapters you want videos on check my channel's playlist for more english grammar worksheets and english concepts there are a lot of videos in that and please go through it and any doubts let me know in the comment section thank you and all the best students